What's up everybody, this is Danny and today I'm in London doing a camera comparison between the Galaxy S23 Plus and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I know a lot of people wanted this because some people just like the flatter display and they want to see if they can save some money with the Galaxy S23 Plus. So let me know what front facing camera looks better and uh, let's test this camera out in every condition and see if it's worth you upgrading to the Galaxy S23 Ultra or not. Let's do it. Before we jump into that, let's first talk about the differences between these two phones and why it's so interesting. First is obviously the price difference. In the US, the S23 Ultra is $200 more than the S23 Plus, and for that extra price, you are getting a larger display at 6.8 inches compared to the 6.6 .6 inches on the S23 Plus. They are both great looking displays, both dynamic AMOLED 2X with 120Hz refresh rate. The Ultra does have a higher resolution display, so if you're a screen buff, you might be able to tell the difference, but to be honest, the display on the S23 Plus looks really great. So I don't think a lot of people will be able to tell the difference, and it is a flat display display which means it's easier to get glass screen protectors and it does feel amazing in the hand so I can see why a lot of people would be interested in the S23 Plus. The S23 Ultra does have a curved display but it has been tapered so it does also feel amazing in the hand to use daily. Some might not like the sharper corners in comparison to the curved corners on the S23 Plus, but this will be personal preference. Of course, the built-in S Pen alone is worth that $200 for some people, so if you're an S Pen user, then it's a no-brainer. But if you don't need it, I totally get that too, because I personally don't use the S Pen all the time. The power inside is the same, the new overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy devices, no differences here, so you'll get all of the same advantages. So the smooth gaming and quick performance all around. The only real differences here are the options. The S23 Plus gets 8GB of RAM with up to 512GB of storage, where the S23 Ultra gets 12GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage. But as usual, you need to think about what you actually need before you buy. If you're wondering about the unboxing experience, it is exactly the same. You get the minimal box, the phone, and a charging cable, but that's about it. No charging brick. So I suggest that you pick up one of these from the sponsor of today's video, Anchor. These are two brand new chargers that were designed for the Galaxy S23 series. The one to pick up for these two phones I am showing you today is the Anchor Ace 45 watt, or you might see it as the Anchor 313 charger. GAN technology allows the charger to be much smaller in size, so here is the Anchor 313 45W charger, and here's the official Samsung 45W charger, and look at the size difference. So that makes it so much easier for travel, either in your backpack or an organizer, so you don't have to worry about that bulk. And it is cheaper than the official 45W charger, so that is also a major bonus. If you didn't know, the S23 Ultra and S23 Plus both have the ability to fast charge at 45 watts, so this charger will allow you to get the maximum charge rate for both of these. Just pair this charger with the 5A cable and you will get Supercharge 2.0 on the screen, showing you that you're getting the fastest charging available. Unfortunately, the cable that comes with the Galaxy S23 series in the box is a 3A cable, so you'll need a 5A cable to enable Super Fast Charging 2.0. Otherwise, you'll see just super fast charging, which means you're getting 25 watt charging. If you want more in-depth details and exact charging times, I will leave a link down below to Gadget Match's charging test. It was very well done, so make sure you check that out. The great thing about these Anchor chargers is they give you all the benefits of GAN technology. This means better heat dissipation, smaller charger size, and better efficiency all around. These Anchor chargers give you up to 10 layers of protection with multi-protect technology. This prevents over voltage, current regulation, and keeps your phone and charger from overheating. So you can have that peace of mind while your S23 phones are charging. Plus you can use this with iPads, iPhones, and other portable devices. So they are great to have around. If you do end up picking up the smaller Galaxy S23, then the Anchor Ace 25 watt charger is the one to get. That will give you the fastest charging available on that device. So I'll leave a link to all of these down below. Why not save some money and get the fastest charging at the same time? The Anchor Ace chargers have you covered no matter what Galaxy S23 phone that you pick up. So the biggest difference to me here is the camera, and I know that a lot of you are thinking the same. On the back of the S23 Plus, there is a clean and minimal triple camera system, and here are all the specs if you want to check them out. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a quad camera system with that legendary periscope zoom with a 10x optical lens compared to the 3x optical that you'll get on the S23 Plus. And here are the rest of the specs as well if you want to check them out. The big notable difference is the new 200 megapixel sensor on the S23 Ultra versus the 50 megapixel main sensor on the S23 Plus, but does it actually make a difference in the real world? Well, here's what I came up with after a couple of days of testing here in London. 
So let's start with the daytime pictures. There will be some color and white balance differences, but just as you would think, they look very similar during the day. They both go back and forth on which creates the most pleasing color tone, but let's look at how these two camera systems differ to see what you would be missing out on technically if you didn't go ultra. First obvious one is the zoom, so I had to test it out. The main looks fantastic on both. The sun was right behind Big Ben, so I thought they were both exposed very well for the scene. Here is the 3x optical, and they both look fantastic. Little brighter on the ultra, but maybe a tad sharper on the plus. But what surprised me is how good the 10x digital was on the S23 Plus in bright lighting. I mean, I had to do a double take here. They both look really close to each other. I had to test it again when the sun was setting to see if light does make a difference. The 3x here again looks super similar, and here is the 10x digital versus the 10x optical again, and you can see that the S23 Plus now is a little muddier here, but it's not bad honestly. But when you start going into 30x, this is where you can start seeing the big difference. The plus looks pretty bad and the ultra here is holding up well, and of course you have that 100x creeper mode if you absolutely need it. Next up is the high resolution mode. How important is that 200 megapixel sensor? I took some side by side with the 50 megapixel mode on the S23 Plus, and I don't think you're going to be missing a ton with everyday shots if you don't jump to 200 megapixels. The details cropped in very heavy looks pretty close in this scenario, and most people don't even crop in this far. When it comes to landscape shots though, it can pull more detail. From this far, of course, they look pretty much the same. And even at 300% scale, you can't see it very well, but then when you crop in 1000% scale, you can see the extra noise the S23 Plus has in the image and how the tiles are clearly defined on the S23 Ultra. But if you don't need this, that's totally understandable as well. For me, the 200 megapixel sensor is more about the look and feel of the images. Like when you look at this image from the same distance, look at the amount of depth of field that you can get during certain scenarios, depending on where the focus lands, you can get more detail like you do here. But that sensor also has some negative effects to where the foreground could just be completely out of focus. It's very stylistic, so some people might actually like this more. And in scenery like this, I like it a lot more because it gives you that extra natural depth of field and it really adds the perspective to this shot. But in this Udon shot from Marugame, you can see that the noodles are so much sharper here and the beef is totally in focus where the bowl is even fading into the depth of field on the new sensor and it's pretty muddy. So this is going to be personal preference for sure i think this one shows it very well there's less fringing on the flower at the top so that's one advantage while the leaves are sharper on the s23 ultra and that's probably where the focus point is landing obviously but look at the base of the plant here that is so much sharper on the s23 plus regardless they both take amazing pictures during the day and if i had to generalize the s23 plus's pictures actually look sharper most of the time looks like they are still possibly on the older processing for this phone where it is slightly over sharpened but this one is a tough call to make because sometimes you can say that the S23 Plus does take better shots. I mean, look at here with the dynamic range and the way that it handled the building. It is really impressive. But for the most part, you're going to get very similar looking images in bright daylight. You will be missing out on that extra resolution and that zoom and also macro mode. There is no macro mode on the S23 Plus. I think it is interesting that by default, it looks like Samsung's being a little more aggressive on the background blur with the portrait mode shots to give it more depth like there is on regular photos. Both do so well with the 1X and 3X portrait shots. It's going to be personal preference on which one that you like better. It does go back and forth. Sometimes the S23 Ultra has more shadow detail and brightness like here. And again, look at that dynamic range on the S23 Plus. It handled it like a champ. To sum it up, yes, there are some differences, but to be 100% honest, I don't think these differences are enough during the day to make enough of an impact, so it all depends on how much you want to nitpick. Here are some front-facing camera shots. In this one, the S23 Plus is slightly sharper. You can see that right here on my forehead. But just like any comparison, they will go back and forth on which one is sharper. It can also do a better job controlling the harsh lighting, especially in portrait mode. It looks so much better. So if I had to call the front facing camera, I would give it to the Ultra. But I'm betting that it's mostly processing and that could change over time with software updates. So let's jump into the daytime video before going into low light. They both can shoot up to 8K 30 frames per second, which is awesome, but we will start here with the 4K 30 frames per second. The video looks very similar, and if anything, the Ultra has a little more contrast and it's a tad more colorful, but they both look fantastic, so the daytime video is definitely a go on both. 
Now here is a walking test inside the O2 mall area and the reason why I did this to see what happens when you switch to the 3x zoom for stabilization. They both do a great job of keeping the footage still so the S23 plus is keeping up like a champ here. This is a walking test when the sun was going down and I was walking a little bit slower here so you can see what the differences may be. Let me know if you can actually see a difference but if I had to call it I think the ultra looks slightly smoother but I don't think that is enough to make a big difference on everyday use. And here is the 8K 30 frames per second in that same scenario. They both look extremely similar but if I had to make a choice on this I think that the 8K video is actually a little sharper and more detailed on the S23 ultra but I'm not sure if this actually makes enough of a major difference in a day-to-day -day video scenario so let's just jump into the nighttime because this is where it gets a little interesting. The nighttime is where you may be able to notice an actual difference. During the day, the older processing could be seen as helpful in some of the pictures because of that extra sharpening. But in nighttime, you do get some of the baggage from the last generation phones. To be honest, it has improved a lot. But when you punch into the sky, you can see the noise clearly on the S23 Plus, where the S23 Ultra has much better noise reduction while maintaining most of those details. I did some tests where I was walking and taking pictures at the same time without stopping and without night mode and you can see that the S23 Ultra is producing a clearer shot, look at Ben and his wife, so much sharper all around. When it comes to shutter lag, I was just hitting the shutter at the exact same time while walking and you can see they both still suffer pretty hard, but this is hard for any smartphone. In this one, see the bus and the background? It was able to give stability to a portion of this picture, which I think is impressive. Here is one where I was standing still and while the bus is blurred on both, look at the person on the S23 Ultra. It is so much clearer and the bikes and the street, it's all better done. So the more powerful ISP and processing improvements will usually translate to a better everyday single snap picture. So what about night mode? What does that do to the noise level on the S23 Plus? This is single snap. Then here is the night mode and it does look really good on the S23 Plus. That little bit of extra sharpening definitely helps. But punching in shows that the noise reduction is still better on the S23 Ultra but the difference is nowhere near as drastic as it was on the single snap shots. We walked back to the hotel that night and took a bunch of pictures to show you the difference. A big saturation difference here on the S23 Plus and I wouldn't blame you if you like that one better. But I kept seeing those improvements on the main sensor shots while walking so that is something to consider. The place where I didn't see much of an improvement is on the ultra wide angle. The pictures just look so close I can barely tell the difference if any. They are both fairly noisy in low light conditions but both produce very similar images so let me know which one that you prefer more. The zoom again is where things start to separate and here is a practical zoom shot test. There is the 3x with night mode from across the river and the ultra does look sharper with better definition on the buildings. Let's go ahead and do the full zoom range up to 30x. This is the main and then there is the 3x and again the S23 Ultra does look better if you look closely. There is the 10x and while they both have ton of artifacting in the sky, the 10x optical on the Ultra is so much sharper in this scenario and then that also translates to the 30x too. So again, if you want that zoom ability, you need to go for the Ultra model. I know you guys like tests on the front facing camera and this was a surprising one. I would say that the plus here in this lighting scenario was more detailed on my face and Enabong's. Saf was the only constant here. While I prefer the S23 Ultra shot here with me and Josh, you can see that the Ultra smoothing out the forehead wrinkles on both of us and the settings were the same on both with smoothing off. So this is a trait that I've noticed on the Ultra when it comes to pictures of people. This one with Michael Fisher was weird because they both focused on another face so I really can't call this one. But in portrait mode, look at this. It starts to flip flop where the S23 Ultra is slightly sharper. So I thought that was a little weird. But honestly, I think it's a toss up once again. So when it comes to selfies, I think besides some very minor processing differences, you almost get the same results. So I think this one is a wash. The S23 Plus did much better than I thought it would when it comes to low light, so if you don't mind the extra noise in the pictures, I don't think you'll be disappointed, but the S23 Ultra is better, so this is where I think the Ultra shows some value in the night mode performance. The video is where I think the S23 Ultra does a better job as well. Even in 4K, the video looks slightly sharper and the noise is better controlled. I did notice that the lens coating might not be as high quality on the Plus model. I did see some light bleeding into some of the photos like this one but I didn't think anything of it. But in this video test you can see that the flaring is slightly larger on the Plus model and I mean it's not like the iPhone whatsoever but there is a slight difference so I thought that I would point that out. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think this is a reason to not buy the Plus, though, so let me be clear about that. The AK video in this mixed lighting city scenario, to me, looks better on the S23 Ultra. The video is getting more light, as you can see. The shadow detail is much nicer, and the stabilization is on point with the AK video. So if you plan to use this video feature, I would go with the S23 Ultra. When the lighting gets more challenging though, this is where you can clearly see the difference with 8K. Look at how much sharper the S23 Ultra remains while the Plus is having a hard time and the video is much noisier. So when it comes to nighttime video, the Ultra definitely comes out on top. So what do you think? Is the difference enough for you to jump to the Ultra here when it comes to the camera? Let me know in the comment section below. After the test, I think if you're primarily a daytime shooter, you're totally fine to get the S23 Plus. But if you're a nighttime shooter and want the best Samsung can give you, then that is where the S23 Ultra brings some value. All right, guys, so hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe for a lot more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next one.